Brother Abram. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, okay, okay, all right. Well, make sure. We want to we welcome each and every single one of you to our um, Sunday Law update where we update you on where we are in the end times, where we uh, just let you know from week to week where we are in Bible prophecy, and we do have a wonderful program today. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we get started. Father in heaven, we ask for your powerful presence to be with us. May you bless this video to go viral all around the world. May you bless um, what we're going to be doing. And we thank you, Lord, for our panelists today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we have a special family guest here today for this week's Sunday Law Update. But before we do that, I have another friend. I call him, uh, we call him my homeboy, meaning they're from the same town. We're from the, the Washington, D.C. area. This is Elder Don Budd. He is the head elder, and I believe you are the lay leader, right, of the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kennesaw, Georgia. Amen. And preaching that present truth message. And right now, we're going to turn it over to him. He has like a three-minute thing that he wants to say. Just, just one minute. Uh, my name is Don Budd, and... Um, I am a real estate agent in the state of Georgia. And um, I'm working with um, Sister Doris on this platform and have been so for about a couple weeks or so, um, trying to network and educate as many Seventh-day Adventists as possible about country living. So um, I, I will be on the platform with her as she is um, promoting the country living for life. So I just wanted to introduce myself for that. Thank you, Brother Bud. And um, just to reiterate, that's on our Tuesday night Zoom meeting. Here's the information for everyone to see. Please come on. It promises to be informative. And in these times, we need all the information we can gather from each other to prepare for the times ahead of us. And if we have been listening to Pastor on the Sunday Law update, we will realize that we don't have a lot of time, brethren. Amen? So we need to be forewarned is to be for armed. So come on Tuesday on Zoom and you will get the information and the presentation will be done by Brother Bud. Thank you so much, Brother Bud. Thank you. So welcome to the Country Life segment of the Sunday Law Update. I am not Sister Doris. I'm Sister Yvette. And I'm just sitting in for Sister Doris. And today we have with us a very special family. They sung a, they sung a song <laughs> that touched my husband's heart. So he was very excited when um, he found out that they will be here today. So before I begin, I'm just going to ask everyone to introduce themselves. And we will start from, we will go in age order. Um, okay, um, my, name is, my name is Kendall Jones, I am 14 years old, and I am the oldest of the group, or the bunch, my siblings. Amen. Uh, my name is Kaylin, I'm 12 years old, and I'm the middle one. Amen. Hi, my name is Kalina, and I'm 6 years old, and I'm the little one. <laughs> <laughs> and I am no? I'm going to let him be the priest he's going to come after me I am Erica and um, I'm the mother of the mother hen of these, these lovely babies <laughs> and this is my lovely husband and I'm Ken 
Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with us. I'm Ken, husband to my wonderful, I'm sorry, husband to my wonderful wife and father to these beautiful children who we have here as well. Amen. Welcome. And um, like I said before, um, Sister Yvette, now because this is the country life segment, you understand that they will be talking about country living. And the, 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 because we don't have much time, I'm going to be asking the questions. I hope not to go too fast and give them time to relate to the answers because I know that there are people out there who want to be where they are just now. So let me give you a brief overview of the family right now. Um, they are trained medical missionaries and God has given them a ministry. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that ministry is. I'm going to allow them to tell you what it is. But I want you to understand that where they are, they are preparing for the times that are ahead of us. They are doing the ministry, the work that God has ordained. And wherever you are, or whatever level you are at, know that you too can answer to God's calling on your life. Now my first question will go to Brother um, Elder Ken. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not getting my, my I wanted to be sure I'm not getting my names mixed up. I've always um, looked at you as a pastor, and I recognize that you lead your family as such. Now I'm going to read a quote that is very important for us. It says, and then I'm going to ask you a question. The greatest evidence of the power of Christianity that can be presented to the world is a well-ordered, well-disciplined family. Amen? Amen? This will recommend the truth as nothing else can, for it is a living witness of its practical power upon the heart. Praise the Lord. And I notice your wife referred to you as priest, which is your rightful position. Amen, brothers? Amen. 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 So, I wanted to, I want to you to explain to us what is it like first of all to recognize God's calling on not only your life but on the life of the, the members of your family in terms of living in the country and in the end times. Uh, definitely. Um, some of you guys I'll share a story probably that you guys are somewhat are familiar with. Um, being the head um, of a household if you think of the head if you damage the head, then the rest of the body is affected by it. And the devil knows that. And so the devil is trying to attack um, men. That's just really what it is. Because he's trying to destroy households. He knows that if he can destroy the head, then he can take the rest of uh, the body with him. Therefore, with that being said, um, it's, it's, it's a very, um, how can I say it? It is a very important role that we understand that it's not just about providing financial means, it's about providing uh, your time, it's about providing your wisdom, your, 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 uh, uh, your, your presence in the family home. Uh, I had a job one time that caused me to work all day, all night. I would come home and then I would basically say, help, stick a fork in me, I'm done. And I would lay down on the floor wherever I was and I would be gone, I would be out. And after so many years of that, I had to, and, and hearing my wife and, and the kids, you know, daddy got to go to work all, oh, um, I realized that something needed to change because the spiritual um, uh, guidance of the family wasn't there. No job, even though it was a job for the church, and that's the thing about it, it was actually a job for the church, um, should never take precedence over the family structure. Because as we talk about, you know, only what you do for Christ will last, and therefore you can work and work and work, and if you were to leave that job, someone will replace you the next day. Amen. So long story short, I had to make the hard decisions, and that's one thing about the head of the household. You have to make those decisions that are led by God, which means that even though I may want to do something, like for instance, in my situation, I recently turned down a promotion on a job because it would take me away from, us from, away from ministry. We'll share a little bit about that in, in, in a second, but as the head of the household, um, you are the guide to the family, um, the family institution, and therefore you have to have, as we all strive to do, a connection with the Lord so that you can lead them in the Amen. right way. Um, how did God, and Sister Erica, if you would answer this for me, how did God tell your family it's time to leave the city and come into the country to live? 
Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you this. When he said it in his word, I knew that that's where I should try to get my life and my family life in line with. So he didn't have to tell me individually. However, um, I will say this much. Uh, when we had first gotten married, um, we've been married now 17 years. So Praise the Lord. Um, Congratulations. You know, we have always wanted to um, live in the country. And one year, I'll say one time we... Yes, one time we, we lived in like the county of Baltimore and you know we stayed there for about six years and from the time in the beginning to the time that we knew it was time to go, it just drastically, ch we, we, we watched it in real time change. When we came it was a beautiful, peaceful county but people in the city was moving to the county because they're trying to get a, get a better life. So we saw things happening that we just did not want around our family, our children to raise up in that. We've been praying, Lord, please move us to the country. While we were praying for that, the Lord knew we weren't spiritually where we, right, spiritually ready. And there is a spiritual preparation Amen. Um, Amen. that is necessary. And it's not it's just about, you know, like getting to the country hiding or just to be out there, just just out there hanging out. So we have been praying and I'll say the Lord heard our prayers because shortly after we moved to um, a location that was very rural. So that was a step up, up yes, from yes, the county. Yes. While we were there, we started studying more and learning more about country living and what country living really was all about and what, what God, what his ideal is for families and people. And so, we recognize this is not country enough. We have to move further out. And so we were praying, and then God, he opened the door wide open, wide open. And so I would just say, you know, you said, how did I know that God was ready for us to move? We, you know, all I can say is try to pray and walk like Enoch and be prayerful about what your own con convictions are, as you know, because if we know something, and we don't do it, then to us it's, it's wrong, it's a sin. But if we know we need to have a better life and we're not praying, Lord, help me to live this life, you know, then we'll be in trouble. But we were, pray, we were being pr very prayerful about it. Okay, amen. Now I'm not going to ask you to tell me your address, not because I don't <laughs> want everybody like t coming to your house. But um, would you say that where you live now is what God had for you? Like you don't see yourself moving until, of course, it is absolutely necessary. Oh no, it was exactly what. Oh, I'm gonna I'm, let you go. You can go ahead. I'm gonna try to tell a qu long story sh quick. When we moved down here, um, it was completely on faith. Um, I had a job, um, and we had nowhere to live. We had a couple of places. You were homeless? That we were homeless. Okay. We actually moved down here. We moved from a, a three-story, two-car garage home with all our bags, uh, with a U-Haul and some cars towed. We even had to have somebody drive a car down. And when we got down here, we looked at two homes to rent, and the Lord said, no, that wasn't it. And so we were sitting in a Walmart parking lot, and my wife, uh, you know, she was praying. And we were praying like, Lord, what next? I mean, literally, we would had our children and you. some animals. <laughs> and so, <laughs> long story short, um, she looked back on, um, I think it was Zillow, and um, this guy had a, an apartment for rent, which actually be a, it was actually a home um, with five plus acres. Wow. And so, long story short, he said that night we can come. And so, we have been there for the last four plus years, living in the country, off uh, secluded. And um, yeah, so it's been a blessing. So we moved in faith. Amen. So you, it, it was a process, first of all, getting right. there, and then you move by faith. Now, um, for, I forgot your name. I'll call you brother jo young brother Jones right <laughs> now. Um, for you to, because I'm sure, how old were you when, when your parents moved here? I was 10 years old. Right. So 10 years old mean you probably had friends where you were living before. So what do you think, um, what, what, was, what were your thoughts when your, your parents tell you, okay, now the Lord wants us to move to the country. Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you looking forward to it? I was kind of disappointed a little bit because I had some kids that I knew in the area, uh, yeah, that I would, you know, be around. And yeah, they were my friends and I kind of didn't want to move 
I, w- I got over that after a while, though. Oh, wow. So are you enjoying be- living in the country now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's wonderful. How about you, my little friend? How do you like living in the country? Good. It's good? <laughs> what do you like about it? Um, really, um... You have your own garden? Yes. Oh, wow. So you love that, huh? Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I know that you are all trained medical missionaries, and um, could you give us just a little, and I want my sister here who has such a beautiful voice to tell us how she ministers in this ministry, uh, doing medical missionary work. Um, let me see, what do I do? Um, yeah, I sing, and... Um, I make just make up scripture songs. Um, wow, praise the Lord. I help make uh, food drinks and I help in the kitchen. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> no, that's a lot. That's a lot. Because you know what, brethren, remember that when no, no work with, in the other lines will be ended, we will be doing what? Medical missionary work. And that means, and I notice that it's, a, it's always a family move for them. I follow them or I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I see her doing the cooking and um, helping her mom. And she does sing beautifully, praise God. And you can use that to minister because some people will be one through songs right and that's all it's about ministry and just saying that word it's about ministry tell us exactly what ministry your family is looking to embark upon now or soon very soon by God's grace we're getting ready to open up a small hygienic restaurant and um, I have to tell you that that is a step step by step process two years ago we you know Someone said, why don't you, when I come to State Line, they would taste some of my brownies or different foods and say, you need to go over to Oakwood Farms and Vendor. And they set it up and had got me in touch with uh, making that happen with Miss Cozy and um, Vendor the whole year of 2020. And there were times when I didn't come and people would say, when I would come back, we would come back and they'd say, you know, where were y'all? Do you all have a restaurant, you know, for the times that we're not there? And we would say, no. And so I'll say last year, really briefly, that last year um, we have been pray- really praying um, about what God, what our next step was. What, what's the next move, Lord? And, you know, we have been convicted to take the course of medical missionary training. And we hadn't, it's like one of those self-paced courses you can kind of do online. And if you, well, it needs to be self, you need to do it. If you, you do something online, you need to do it and kind of get it done. And so we kind of took our time doing it. But during this time, I remember I had got injured. So it kind of set me back and set the whole family back because they really had to minister to me during that time. But we were prayerful when the very first Sabbath I was able to go to church we went and there was a gentleman there with his wife from the NAD who was anointing families, praying and anointing families. And they said, you need to go in and get anointed. So we went up as a family to get anointed and to pray. And we, our prayer was, please show us what to do next. At, we were asking for special prayer for God to lead and guide us and to give us clarity. And so that's what happened. And I will say that we even felt convicted finished the medical missionary course. We have been speaking to different people who've taken the course, said the door is open, oh, wide open, and I'm telling you, sisters and brothers, it is very true. If you take the course, opportunities is just there for you. And so we started doing teaching health, sem- health seminars and cooking demos, and every one that we were at, people said, where's your restaurant? And we just said, you know, just pray for it, pray, pray for it. And the very last one, you know, um, Someone said, where's your restaurant? And we said, well, pray for it. And right at the conclusion of that, it was like the Lord was opening up the door for this opportunity. So that's the project now that we're at, which is the cook, the hygienic restaurant. I mentioned that backdrop only to show you all that it is literally a step-by-step. If you have a gift, remember, your gift will make room for you. Amen. Whatever that's what the word of God says. If you start wherever you are, and these are some of the images that, uh, that we did at the last cooking demo, the All About Health and Wellness cooking demo. 
Um, and you all can start right where you are, right in your church. But I just share that just to show you that it is a step-by-step -step process. And, you know, as you start, you may think it's small, start there. You will be surprised just how quickly and fast that God will open up the doors for your next move. Amen. What's the name of your ministry? Well, we have a two-sided ministry. It's all one ministry, but Change by Beholding Ministries really is about, you know, helping to, it's been, it was supposed to be about helping to reflect the character of Christ, right? Um, we've sent people like yourself will look and say, oh, you have a beautiful family. And so we said, you know what, there more attention need to be made to the family. So it is a family ministry. We incorporate everyone. And if you're looking at this screen right now, this is the restaurant that we have been blessed to have. We've been working with the city of Morrison, and uh, we have acquired the space. Uh, we were trying to open up a little while ago, but, you know, we are looking off, working off donations, actually. And so you can take a look inside of it, all that it has. Um, it is already prepped and ready for uh, um, uh, use that is uh, a, a commercial refrigerator that some of the donations have uh, assisted us with purchasing along with many of the other items in there and you know we're told that we're supposed to be workers as a matter of fact in the health food ministry um, and it talks about uh, every hygienic restaurant should be a school it says that in our cities interested workers will take hold of various lines of missionary work hygienic restaurants will be established but with that uh, but with what carefulness should this work be done? Those working in these restaurants should be consistently experimenting that they may learn how to prepare palatable, healthful foods and also teach others to do so as well. And so that is what we're trying to do. Um, the restaurant is actually not just about food. It's about health education for the community, um, helping other people to learn the, the laws of health and the uh, principles that God would have for us so that we can live a healthy and prosperous life and ultimately be the entering wedge for them to accept him as their personal savior. Amen. There, the vision, if you can read about it in early writings, page 55, 54 to 56, where God gave her a vision and how the father was in the holy place and then he got up and went into the most holy and then Jesus went in after him and Jesus held up his right arm and said to the people that were praying for his spirit, wait here. And you know that the right arm of the gospel is the health message. And um, this is my final question and um, maybe everyone can attempt to answer, but um, I think I read, and I'm paraphrasing, that if we, it would be a sad thing if we only go into making all this healthy food just to cater to the physical um, aspect of man and not the spiritual. So do you recognize what the mission of you opening this restaurant really is? Is it to make a profit or is it to do ministry? So, First off, we have to recognize and understand that everything that we do is, um, how can I say it? It's not a sacrifice because, and let me, let me paraphrase it. It's a sacrifice because we have to make the decision to do it, but it's not at a loss. I think sometimes we think that when we sacrifice things for Christ that we're going to lose something. No. So when I said to you guys a little earlier that I, I had turned down an opportunity for a promotion on my job, that was not really a sacrifice, even though it was a sacrifice. It was something that was necessary in order to do this. So, no, we're not looking to, if the Lord blessed with finance, great, because there are some people that God, the Lord blesses with great wealth, but that is not the goal. The goal is to bring people to a knowledge of him so that they may accept him as their personal savior. Amen. Amen. Yes, um, and I just want to say this up front since I kind of mentioned it to you outside. You know, if someone comes through those doors and uh, they're hungry and they don't have the money, we're going to serve them Amen. because that's what God calls us to do. And so, you know, we've explained it. I just want to say that with our children, everything is that we, we lead them with us. You know, we're guiding them with us step by step. Any move we make, whatever is the next move, we don't let them just be blindsided. We're doing it together and we're setting them up so that they know what to expect as well as we're studying and learning from the Word of God. So. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I, I'd ask your parents to explain that if when they open the restaurant, you don't see all the great money coming in, <laughs> if you'll be discouraged or to say, oh Lord, at least somebody's coming to Jesus through this, how would you feel about that? 
Um, I would feel probably um, very happy at the fact that uh, we were able to serve, despite the fact um, that uh, despite the fact that money is not coming in. Um, I wouldn't really be too concerned about that. Um, because it's about winning souls. Yes. Amen. It's about winning souls. Sweetheart, if, if, if you don't see a lot of money, but you see a lot of people come to Jesus, which would you prefer? Happy. Oh, you'd be happy to see them come to Jesus? Yes. Amen. I'm sure you would be. How about you, my brother? I would definitely prefer to see people come to Jesus than to get a profit. A profit from what we give to them. Like, yeah, that's what my mom said. If someone were to come in and they didn't have the money, we would still give it to them. I wouldn't feel sad or anything because I know I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. Are you guys homeschooled? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. wow. So even while opening the restaurant, they'll be homeschooled. Oh, that's a lot of work. But then again, I realize living in a country is not easy. Believe you me, it's not easy. You have a lot of work to do, a lot of work. But um, because I believe that this is a ministry for God that you're doing, I'm going to risk um, being up here <laughs> and ask if anyone wishes to donate to, to the family, like where do we, what platform can they um, give a donate, send a donation to, to you? Okay, um, and if you're looking up on the screen, I believe all of the many different ways are, are listed up there. We have Zelle, and um, I'm not sure if it is on the screen for the viewers. You can feel free to take a screenshot or of it as well from Zelle. It's not on the screen? Okay. Zell, um, okay, um, Zell, um, okay, all right, no problem. <laughs> so we're, they're going to uh, post it up in just a second, but we have many different platforms that they can give. And again, you know, the monies that uh, you give will go towards the Lord's work. Um, we are trying to, as much as possible, we're supposed to avoid debt. I like the plague. <laughs> and so, man, with school loans and everything like that, too, we have enough. And we, we, we put it in the Lord's lap and we said, Lord, if this is something that you want us to have, you want us to do, then he's going to provide the way. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 John 5, 14 and 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So what that means is that if this is God's will, then when I ask him, it's the answer already answered. It's God's Amen. bill. There you go. God's if it's God's will, God's will, will, it's God's bill. And if you look on the screen, you can see it there. There are s several different ways that you can give. No amount is too small. No amount is too great. For those who may not even be able to give, we solicit your prayers because the prayers, the, the, uh, the effectual fervent prayer for the righteous availeth much. And so we thank you for anything that you can give. And ultimately, this is the Lord's work. And we uh, so desire for people to come to a knowledge of him. Thank you very much. I want to thank um, the Jones family. I'm sorry that we do not have time for you to ask them questions. However, those online can call or email their questions to the Jones family. And those here can meet them outside after the Sunday Law update. And I just want to ask that you will come continue to thrive in doing God's will because very soon we are going to meet our master and please when the Lord asks of you my brother where's the flock that I gave you by God's grace I hope you can say here they are because these are indeed serious times and the enemy knows that and he attacks the family and especially the children so brothers and sisters be an example for these there's one quote that the servant of the Lord said if you should have your family at a church where they are not living as they should you should take your family as far as possible away. We don't want to have to do that. So let us strive to make sure we live to be an example to them. Your final words, Brother Ken, since he, he's the priest. Okay. So, and you asked that we um, homeschool our children. We have, I've been in the education system for 20 years. Yes, we do homeschool our kids. With that being said, we found a, uh, a very, uh, um, I guess, beneficial, God-led school um, that's online school. The name of it? In Home Academy. In Home Academy. And I yes. believe very the, familiar with the you. director right. <laughs> is there, and you know, and we're entrusting our children to there because we believe that, you know, God is. This is a school of the prophets, and they're going to help train children up. And so I wanted to put that little. I know she's here in the back. I don't. I uh -huh. know we can't do too much, but I just wanted to put that out there for anybody else that may be looking for a God school, a God's children, you know, um, school to 
train and teach your children. So I just wanted to put right. that plug in there. So material. as we're working in the restaurant, <laughs> they can have their online Amen. program. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, thank you very much, thank and you. God bless you. The blessing of the God Lord be all. upon you. Thank have you so much. Have a blessed much. Sabbath. God bless you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Can y'all sing at the end? Oh, yeah. All right. If you, okay, if you don't have to go. Amen, Brother Richard. You can take it off of the screen. Um, brother, can we ask for two men to bring that table from off in this room right here, over here? Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, we thank God for the Jones family and their contribution yeah. to their state, to the state line family. And Brother Jones was on our, for our was was one of our panelists on the video that went viral worldwide. Amen, amen. And so we thank God for that. Amen. And so we just give God the praise and leave this here. Leave this here. Amen. And I believe, will you be here for the song? Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Well, we just thank God for them, and we're going to be getting our table, our panel together in just a minute. But we want to um, um, just update you on where we are in the end times. And I'm going to just get this one right here. Thank you very much. All right. So, brothers and sisters, are you ready for the Sunday Law update? Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we want to um, update you on where we are in prophetic prophecy as we are getting closer and closer to the close of probation. Now, we just want to let you know that if you believe that the end of all things is at hand, if you are able to come out tomorrow at 5.30 p.m., what time did I say? 5.30 at the Legacy Center, we're going to go out and knock on some doors and look for this lost sheep. Amen? Amen. And so we just thank God for that. Amen. So where's, what's going on right now in prophetic history? A lot of things are going on. Now, how many of you were here with me? Last week, Saturday night, when we had Pastor Samuel Thomas on Zoom. How many came on Zoom? Oh, it was packed. It was, it was, it was the most people we've had. God knows, for, and it's a lot of more. It was people from all over the world on this um, platform. But we had uh, Pastor Samuel Thomas, um, and we had a wonderful time. Uh, he had some things to do, so we're not going to be, he's not going to be with us for a while, but he's going to come back with some information. Now, what we want to do is we want to let you know, um, Brother Richard, let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. Let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. We want to let you know that tonight, what time did I say? Tonight at 8 o'clock, what time did I say? 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to be talking tonight about some more stuff tonight. So we're going to continue on from last week. Last week, we dealt with artificial intelligence and a whole bunch of stuff. And let me tell you this, Ray, tonight we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're going to do a special Sunday Law update tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is approximately three hours from now. And the Zoom meeting ID, there is no passcode other than just the ID, 703029. 6702. And we promise you that we're going to preach what testimony? Straight. The straight testimony. Amen. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we're serious about getting the straight testimony. We want to ask that you will pray daily for our billboard that is halfway between here and Huntsville. And we have this billboard on both sides. Amen. And we want to let you know that on the 15th of October, what day did I say? The 15th of October, I'll be, we'll be doing an evangelistic crusade for the city of Huntsville. All of you are invited. We ask that you will bring yourself and somebody who needs to hear the truth, to hear the truth for the first time. We ask that you will help our sister church out because brothers and sisters, pretty soon, the whole world will be converted and in harmony with the Sunday law. Do you understand this right here? A lot of things are happening. And brothers and sisters, what's going on right now? We're seeing the world uniting right now. Um, the t uniting the world to tackle what kind of change? Climate change. Brothers and sisters, is this prophetic? So when we see this whole picture of the world coming together, brothers and sisters, and then, of course, what the Pope want, what things want, what they want to do in December, brothers and sisters, we need to be very ready. Now, so what happens is uniting the world uh, um, against to tackle climate change, we understand that a lot of things are getting ready to come. Now, we already know that climate change is, of course, embedded in Laudato Si. And the Pope is calling the, for the whole world to repent. 
and the Pope calls on humanity to repent for the abuse of Mother Earth. And so what the Pope is saying is, is that in order for this to happen, we need to come together under one, a thing called universal what, somebody? Communion. But little do people know that they are playing right into the hands of the King of the North in the book of, Revela of Daniel chapter 11, and through Jesuit infiltration, where the Jesuit infiltration have infiltrated churches and governments for the purpose, brothers and sisters, to bring about a thing called what kind of rest? Sunday rest. Sunday rest by law, where we will see the union of church and state. And when this happens, all hell is getting ready to break loose. And Ellen White says, by the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy, Father, be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, by the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, this nation will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. The time is going to come where every human being will have to choose between the seal of the living God and the mark of the beast. And brothers and sisters, understand this. That remnant is only going to be a few, while the majority will go along with church and state to enforce the national Sunday law. In Revelation chapter 17, the Bible says, These have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the who, somebody? The beast. All the world powers and all the world religions will come together to join forces with the papacy. And as you see right here, the Pope, he's doing his job as a Jesuit. His job is to facilitate everybody uniting them to, with him together. I mean, Christians and Muslims are definitely incompatible based upon their beliefs. Islam teaches that Allah has no son. And even though we may not agree with the religion of Catholicism, even Catholicism believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So why is it that the Jesuit order or the papacy is uniting with the Muslims? You know why? Because the Jesuit oath says that the end justifies the means. And what we're seeing is we're seeing the two powers that are going to play a big part in the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. The, the second beast power, which is the United States, and the first beast power, which is Roman Catholicism. And this thing on climate change is uniting everybody. But thank God the Lord told us beforehand this was gonna come. Ellen White says, the angel, when the angel of mercy folds her wings and departs, Satan will do the evil deeds which he has long wished to do. Storms and what? Tempest, which they call climate change. War and bloodshed. In these things he delights, and thus he gathers in his harvest. And so completely will men be, be, be deceived by him that they will declare that these calamities are the result of the desecration of the what day of the week? First day of the week. And from the pulpits of the popular churches will be heard the statement that the world is being punished because Sunday is not honored as it what? should be. Now, we know in Revelation and the spirit of prophecy that the three unclean spirits are going to play a part. And all the nations of the earth will enforce a national Sunday law where it will put the woman on top of political affairs. And brothers and sisters, we are about to see this. So therefore, it is time to do what, somebody? Wake up. Wake up. It's time to wake up because a Sunday law is coming, brothers and sisters. And we're seeing this being championed in so many ways across the internet, as you see here on this, on this slide here. Every now and then you see articles talking about the need to keep Sunday. And brothers and sisters, with a Catholic president doing what the Pope says, we could be in this a little bit more sooner. Am I right? But whether that's the case or not, understand that Sunday worship is a what, somebody? Deception. And it will be the mark of the beast. But always remember that when the root is deep in Christ, you have no reason to fear the storm. So we understand what's coming down the pipeline. Every country will enforce a Sunday law. And what happens is the Pope is calling for universal um, solidarity to deal with this issue. And Ellen White, thank God, the Lord has told us in inspiration that this will be talked about. In Great Controversy, page 589, the Spirit of Prophecy says, in accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great what, somebody? In conflagrations are the firestorms, right? Where the, fi the, the forest fires. And keep amazing facts in prayer. Did you see, um, anybody get that um, email from Doug Batchelor? Yeah. So we need to pray for them because a conflagration is going on. In fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves. Listen to this right here and earthquakes in every place and in how many forms? A thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. Have you heard about food shortages? Yes, yes. and brothers and sisters, what we're seeing right now is being played out. 
It says he, talk about Satan, imparts to the air a deadly taint, COVID-19 and other pestilences, and thousands perish by the pestilence. So this thing is real, and that's why we tell you to keep safe, amen? And if you're sick, stay home. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and what? Disasters. And then it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the what Sabbath? Sunday Sabbath, and that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be what? Strictly enforced. And when it happens, the whole world's going to pay homage to the beast. Am I right? And everything is really now ready for it to where we have this thing stacked in Congress right now to where you have a majority of Catholic Supreme Court. And brothers and sisters, all I can tell you is, is that we're going to have to stand one day like the three Hebrew boys. And this is going to be our test. This is going to be our test. As you see, this is going to be our test. Just as the three Hebrew boys had to stand before an image, one day we're going to have to stand before the image of the beast. And just as it was, where only the a remnant stood, only a remnant is going to stand. How many of you want to be a part of that remnant in the last days? Now, let me ask you this right here. What if, your parents, what if your children decide to go along with the beast? What if your family members? Now, if your friends do, you're like, that's my friends. But if your family. Brothers and sisters, this is an individual thing. Am I right? And you got to make that choice. So according to Revelation chapter 13, it's going to be the second beast power that's going to enforce the mark of the beast. The United States of America will form an image to the beast. And this image is nothing more than a replica of the characteristic of the first beast, which was the uniting of church and state. So therefore, we're going to see in this country the religious element of the second beast power, which is Protestantism, become what is called apostate Protestantism to enforce the image or the mark of the beast, which this number 666 is associated with the sun god, because in paganism, it was the sacred number of the sun god, which means that Sunday worship will be the mark of the beast. If there's somebody who's watching right now who is not a Sabbath keeper or seven day Adventist or whatever, just understand we're not saying that you have the mark of the beast because nobody has the mark of the beast yet, amen? The time will come when no man will be able to buy or sell. And that time has not come yet. But with all what's going on, we're going to show you that it's almost here. The Catholic Church says that Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, they say. Isn't that serious? And that this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. And we're going to have to tell the people. But somebody says, how do you know that Sunday really is not the Sabbath? Well, the Bible says that Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Am I right? Amen. Which is Sunday. And the day before that was the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. Am I right? Amen. And Jesus died on good what? Friday. So in between Good Friday and the first day of the week, you have the seventh day Sabbath, which is on what, somebody? Saturday. And so therefore, Sunday is truly the forbidden, unsanctified day. And it is just as forbidden as the forbidden fruit. Brothers and sisters, this law is going to be complete. This, call, this law is completely antichrist. You hear me? It goes against the principles of the Christian Sabbath, which is Saturday. And they're going to pass this law to make you receive the mark of the beast and go to hell. Do you understand this right here? And this thing is real. Now, understand this. Everything's in place where not only do they know who you are, but guess what? They know where you are. And when, they, when I say where you are, they know exactly where you are seven days a week. Brothers and sisters, I'm about to show you something. Brother Richard, you can take it off the screen right now. Brothers and sisters, we're going to show you something that is going to prove to you Brother Emmanuel, I don't know how you say it in French, but it's over. It's over, brothers and sisters. It's fini. Oh, yeah, fini means finish, right? It's over, y'all. It's fini. 
Amen. I don't know how you say it in Spanish. It's terminaste. I don't know. But in terminal, all right? Brothers and sisters, how many of you have central air and central heat? You better, amen. <laughs> Somebody said, what about off the grid and stuff? Well, uh, you know, it's what it is. Brothers and sisters, are you ready for this? Letting you know that this thing is here, y'all. Let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. And we have a special guest here. We're going to bring him up in just a second. This is from CBN News. What news? CBN, which, is not, which means it's not fake news. It said, energy emergency. It says, some Denver, Colorado customers are blocked from using their AC. And CA tells electric car owners not to charge them. Brothers, do you know, do you know what this means? Oh, I'm going to just show it to you right here. A power company in Denver, Colorado, we're making a point here, they blocked thousands of customers from controlling their thermostats on Tuesday. Did you see that? I, I didn't know that they can block your thermostat. Now, they can take off your stuff. Now, they can take off. But now it says in this article that they have blocked Customers from controlling your own thermostat, have mercy. Nothing is yours in these last days. Do you understand this? It says, after they volunteered to be part of an energy-saving program. So if some program comes to your town, you may not need to do it. Am I right? Amen. And notice this right here. This move came as temperatures abroad, uh, outside soared, leaving many residents suffering in the heat. But watch when the cold comes. Needless to say, customers were hot, literally, and hot under the collar as they took to social media to complain. KMGHTV reports that certain XL customers found out that they had no what? Control over the temperature in their own homes after a message appeared on thermostat stating it was locked due to an energy emergency. Wow. Did you see that, brothers and sisters? And look what they're saying right now that Joe Biden needs to do. Look at this right here. It says Joe Biden needs to declare a climate emergency. Now, if they have an emergency in Colorado where they can control your thermostat, if the president of the United States was to do a nationwide climate emergency, brothers, they can control every thermostat. Am I right? But that's not the mark of the beast, right? But this lets you know that they can control your stuff. Am I right? So what happens is this. So what we need to understand is, look what's going on in Switzerland. Say what? Switzerland. Have you heard of Switzerland? Yeah. Switzerland may put you to jail, anyone who heats their rooms above 19 Celsius. Yes, sister. That's why they wanted to have everybody install the energy, the, the smart meters. That's why, hold on, hold on, hold on. Brother, brother, uh, not Jerry, brother Rock, Ron. Brother Pride, excuse me. Yeah, John, Ron. <laughs> Your husband got so many names. <laughs> All right. So, sister, say that one more time so the audience can hear that. That's why they wanted to. Say, speak, speak uh, that's why they give incentives for people to install the smart thermostats. Smart and, thermostats? And, and, and energy saving. Yeah, they. Wow. Wow. Now, are they pushing that over here in Alabama? Are they pushing that over here? You, you got it? No, you don't have a choice? No. They just in small. A smart meter? Go ahead. No, you have a choice. The problem is, is we have to be studied in all these things. I came from California when they were doing the really heavy smart metering. You had to go and do your own research for those things. Remember, the Lord wants us to think. And there are small little law clauses that if you fight for it, they would not put the meter on, but they gave, uh, made it very difficult, such as also completely off the point, but like, I have a driver's license in California. They force you to have a social security. I do not use a social security. I have a driver's license. I had to go through a whole bunch of things. Now, that's my personal thing. I'm not telling anybody right, else to do it. Right, understand But because I use it on the principle is that's part of the system of the mark. That's part of the control things. We're going to have to learn to be as gentle as a dove, but as cutting as a serpent. We have to know how things work. 
we're going to have to understand and study these laws. We're going to have to understand these things. This is what the Lord's telling us to do. Mm. So 19 Celsius, for those that are asking, is 66 degrees. All right. So, you, so if, you, if you heat your room above 66 degrees in Switzerland, um, Switzerland, is, 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 that, is that the West Indies? Now, if you put 66 degrees in the West Indies, that's, that's air conditioning. That's nice. But up, up, up by Switzerland, it's cold up there. Look at this. Right? You can go to jail if you heat your room above 19 Celsius. And look at that right there. A just target. Look at that right there. Look at this. Oh, yes. Is the world coming to an end or what? All right. Switzerland is considering putting anyone who heats their room above 19 Celsius in jail up to three years. Up to three years. And notice this, it can only happen, it can only if happen if Switzerland is forced to ration gas because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Fines could be also handed out for violators. And let me ask you this right here. Would you go to jail for breaking the Sunday law? Does prophecy tell us that? Will, can, can, will, will there be fines for those who don't go along with the Sunday law? Yes. So notice this right here. We're seeing little Mark of the Beast juniors out there. Do you understand this right here? So what happens is the issue is not the day of worship. It's just you setting your air above a certain thing. And they could put, how would they know? How would they know that you got it? So if you put it at 65, you're in trouble. Am I right? So this is deep. And it says here, Marcus Spornidli. Spokesman for the Federal Department of Finance told Block that the rate of fines on a daily basis could start at 30 Swiss franc, about 40 Canadian dollars, which is how much in our money, I don't know. But listen to this. He added that the maximum fine could be up to 3,000 Swiss francs, over $4,000. 4,000 of anything in a Europe is too much. Do you understand this right here? So do you see what's going on? to where you can go to jail for this. So what happens is this, when you see that you were blocked from even putting your, uh, 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 you, you know, they do, and this is in America, brothers and sisters. This is in America, this is in the land of the free and the, the land of the free, huh? And the home of the brave. Look what it says here, it is a what kind of program? Voluntary. You know that voluntary is also always the precursor for mandatory, right? Yes. Right, and so what happens is this. Customers receive a $100 credit for enrolling in the program, but you know the $100 ain't a lot when it comes to your heat bill, and $25 annually? You can get that to a five-year-old child, but to me, $25 is not a lot of money. And Romine told the television station customer, consumers to also to agree to give up some control to save energy and money and make the system more reliable. Notice right here, you have to give up some what, somebody? Control. And so, you know, somebody's pushing the button. Do you understand this? Yes, um, somebody's in the back. They have a, uh, and, okay. And whenever you have a hand up, we need you to keep your comments 30 seconds or less. Amen. This is very deep. That comment, um, the goal is to, they, they give them incentives so that they can make the system more reliable. Mm. So that's the same thing with the, the jab issue. We all benefit from this. Just do it, you know, it's, it's the same attitude. And, and the climate change, you know, it's getting so, so strong that, you know, they're, they're going to incentivize you to do these sort of things. So this way you can contribute to, you know, lessening the burden of the climate change. So, mm. yeah. And look at this right here. Meanwhile, in California, state officials are telling electric vehicle owners not to even charge their own cars not to charge them to avoid power outages. You hear that? And Governor Gavin Newsom declared, listen to this, a state of emergency with temperatures expected to be 10 to, 10 to 20 degrees above normal and urge people to help reduce demand for electricity by turning, up their, turning their thermostats up to 85 degrees if they won't be at home over the holiday weekend. Brothers and sisters, do you see that we're in an energy crisis? Do you see that we're in a crisis? And brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. We are truly at the end of time. So are we in an energy emergency right now? Well, guess what? I want to show you right now an article that just came out. Listen to this right here. Uh oh, I took all the fun out, right? <laughs> Seven, and it's, this, this, it just came out just this week. 
It says seven energy saving measures that Ireland can take right now. So now, if it's an, it's, an, uh, it's an emergency in America, it's an emergency in Europe, now they're saying that there are seven energy-saving measures that they can take right now. Let me just get to this right here. Can I just get to it? All right. Now, they're talking about energy-saving measures, and look what they say right here. Look at this. Reduced trading hours. You hear that? Reduce what? We did it back in the 1980s, and now it can help again reduce trading hours on what day, somebody? Sundays. Sundays. Brothers and sisters, do you see that? This is September 7th. How long ago was September 7th? Just three days ago. Wow, but, not, but you already saw it. Car-free Sundays. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Car-free Sundays. What they've done in the past, and the last energy crisis in countries like the Netherlands, they introduced car-free Sundays or family-oriented Sundays. You're not going to go back to the Stone Age. You're, you're going to go back in time maybe 15, 20 years ago. Other words, they're talking about Sunday, brothers and sisters, and look what's going on right now. Car-free Sundays where? Brussels. In Brussels. Have you heard of Brussels? Brussels to be the largest car-free zone in Europe. Look at this right here. And uh, what, how long ago was September the 5th? Only seven days ago. This is so deep. It says the Brussels, the Brussels capital region will hold its much celebrated annual car free Sunday on September the what? When is that? Next week. And it will be the largest car free zone in Europe. Between 930 and 1900 hours at, at 7 o'clock, streets throughout the entire region will be empty of cars making the way for more vulnerable road users such as cyclists, pedestrians. For Brussels residents and visitors alike, it's an ideal time to rediscover the city on where? Foot or by bike or e-scooter or public transportation. And this is very deep. And so according to the recent survey, notice this right here, most Brussels residents will be in favor of increasing the number of car-free days in the region but brothers and sisters let me tell you this right here for right now it's going to be on what day somebody sunday. on sunday and this is very deep um what do you have to say about, what do you think about this what do you think about this it's crazy yes go ahead go ahead you can take it off the screen brother richard um, this is going back to uh, when you were talking about them controlling your thermostat and you, you not being able to use your thermostat past a certain temperature. Well, I know my husband used to work with a contracting company through Huntsville Utilities. I don't know if any of you have seen like random people in your yards kind of scoping around, but what they're doing is they're trying to change all of the meter readers to digital meters. And um, that, my husband used to do that job, actually. And he said some people didn't even know that they signed up for it. He would go to their house, and they didn't know. And maybe they didn't sign up for it. It could have been that they just, you know, put them on that list so that they could go out and do it. Um, but speaking of incentives, um, these, these gentlemen doing these jobs, they are paying these people $90,000 a year or more mm. to go out and switch out these meters to digital meters. Wow. And today we, yes, my sister in the back. They have even changed your water meters a digital also. Wow. Even though they come there, uh, I accidentally opened my own to check it one, one day about a couple of weeks ago, and I touched it, and it went to zeros, and then reset itself. So they come in, and they, everything is digital, and they re, the meters are being read at Huntsville Utilities. They are not coming out and reading them. In case so you're you saying know. they're not coming out to read meters no more? Not, not the electric wow. meters, the water at present, but it, that will stop soon. So as you see, everything is getting digitalized. So what happens is somebody can control your thing from a, a certain distance, am I right? And so when the time control, can we see how the no buy, no sell system really is here? I mean, if you don't comply, then guess what? You get your services turned off. Am I right? Amen. So can we agree that we're at the end of time? Yes. The only thing is we just don't know exactly when the end is going to come. Now, we have a special guest with us today. Um, this is um, a good friend of mine. His name is Don Budd, and he is from Washington, D.C. Amen. <laughs> you know, you always see a New How many of y'all from New York in here? Somebody's always from New York. I, you can go, no matter where you go, it's going to be a New Yorker somewhere. I went to Australia one time, met a New Yorker down in Australia in the land on under. 
Yay, mate, right? Yes, indeed. And Australia is a beautiful country, too. So, Brother, Do Do Brother Bud, can you give him the microphone? And you can get one of the microphones over here, the blue microphone over here. Um, brother, um, yeah, okay, good. Um, this is my uh, good friend, Don Bud. Amen. When, when I heard he was from D.C., you know, you know it's, a, it's a special relationship that we have. Hello with one another. Come on, sit right here. Amen. And so he is the head elder and also the lay leader of the uh, Kennesaw Seven Day Adventist Church, not Kennesaw, the Remnant Seven Day Adventist Church in Kennesaw. Y'all believe in present truth over there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're looking for a present truth church in the Atlanta area, this is a church to go to. What do you think of the what do you, what do you think of the things you just saw here, my brother? Well, my mind goes to uh, volume nine, page eleven. Mm. Final movements will be rapid ones. So how do you see this as the final movements really being rapid ones? It, it, it's all coming together, and, and it's coming together in, in another, another statement like blind, with blinding force. Wow. We, we see it coming from all kinds of angles. Yes. And um, trying to catch us off guard. That's right. And so what happens is, I mean, what changes do you see? Because I know you, what changes do you see in the Atlanta area? As far as these Everything, things? All these things. Well, I, I got a call from a good friend who asked me, were, um, what, were we affected by the flood mm. that, that came to uh, Georgia, which we weren't, uh, thank God. But we, we're starting to see floods happen in all parts of the world. And what did the spirit of prophecy say about these floods? They're, they're going to come. They're, they're, the floods are going to come. And you put the statement up there right. from Great Controversy 589 and 90, and they're going to be more frequent and more disastrous. So you can see, I mean, look, we're from D.C. We know what goes on in D.C. in the DMV. But just from down here, we're seeing the same problems morally and even economically everywhere, right? And how important is it that we leave the city and move into the country? Oh, very important. I mean, I'm, I'm in real estate, and, you know, when COVID first hit, I had about 100 Seventh-day Adventists to call me for country property. And um, I've helped a lot of people find those country homes, but as COVID kind of died down, it seems like our people went right back to sleep. So you're telling me that people now are comfortable now going back into well, these cities? Well, they're, they, they never left. Mm. They, they, and, you know, a lot of people ask me, should I wait? My answer is always no, because I remember the Bible says, remember whose wife? Lot. Lot's wife. And Lot's wife was destroyed because Lot lingered. Mm. And I think our people are waiting for a volcano or something to explode. Uh, more fireworks mm. before they actually move. Wow, that's, that's, that's very serious. And so, um, Elder Bud, um, 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 you, you so now is the time. Absolutely. We, 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 can't, we definitely can't wait. Can't wait. You can't wait. Why is, it, okay, why is it that we are not to wait? Put the mic to your mouth. Well, if we wait, it's to our peril. Um, that's why the story of Lot's white wife is in the Bible, because... When you delay, you give the enemy the opportunity to entangle your feet. And uh, a lot of Seventh-day Adventists are doing that. I'm seeing it from uh, our real estate business uh, side mm -hmm. and also from a perspective of knowing country living and believing in present truth. So it's kind of like a unique package. I say that humbly. So, you know, do you deal with solar panels? No. Okay. I just got a text here from somebody. It says they're trying to get us to get the solar system through the government, or get solar panels through the government. You know about that? And it says, I told them that when they call my house, if there's anything to do with the government, I don't want to put the solar system in my house. And so this is very deep. But listen to this right here. I just, um, this is um, from one of my fr friends in the um, Houston, Texas area. In the country of Kenya, they're now doing elections now, and it says even elections in Kenya had the results disputed over electronic manipulation. It says it ended up in court, but elect the election commission declined to grant access to the electronic servers, so the court ruled to accept the declare winner, so as no, there was not enough evidence on the dispute. So even with this electronic stuff, yeah. so everything's getting electronically now. 
What's the problem with that, or what potential problems do you see with that, Elder? Well, I, this is probably old news, um, mm -hmm. but back in February, the president uh, gave an executive order, if, if you are familiar with that, for the digital currency yes. in America. So we can see the walls closing in, and it's time to escape. It, it, it's time to escape? Absolutely. It's time to escape. Well, um, but they know where we are, brother. That's, you, you know, can I read a scripture? Go ahead, read the scripture. Okay. In Matthew chapter 24, this is where my, my eyes are glued because the Bible tells us in Second Peter that we are to be looking for and hastening to the coming of the Lord. So my That's eyes right. are really glued to the skies. But in Matthew 24, verse 14, yes. I'll go to 15. You all know 14. Right. It says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then verse 16 says, Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Mm. And I believe that this is twofold, not literally the rocks, but the mountain that we are to flee to is Christ. Amen. So although we can't hide because we, we, we've been here too long, mm -hmm. uh, Christ could have come a long time ago. Right. So now that we are here, the only hiding place we have is in Christ. That's it. And through a relationship with Christ. So, Elder Bud, so let me ask you this right here. You know, all this stuff is getting digitalized, so we know it's more control over everything. Do you believe there'll be control over information? Yes. Uh, yes. You, you think it's be control over information? So is it possible that certain things won't be able to get leaked out? Or the yeah. truth won't get leaked out? I, I believe the truth is going to get out. It's going to get out, but it's going to be harder for us. Am I right? Yeah. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of slides here. Let's go to the slides, Brother Richard. We're going to show you what's going on right now. Um, these are some articles that have come out. And look what it says here. World Economic Forum publishes an article calling for global censorship using artificial intelligence and notices human intelligence. Yes. Look at that. But along with this, Inbal Goldberger also mentioned that the artificial intelligence will be used to, de to detect what? Extremism. extremism. Now, who gets to define this extremism, Elder Bud? Who gets to define, gets to define that? The, the state, the government. They, they get to do that, right? Disinformation. Who gets to define what disinformation is? Right? And hate speech. So when, when watch this right here, when Sunday worship is proposed as a possible global day, global day of repentance or a way to get back to living for the Lord, and we say, no, that's the mark of the beast, will that be considered extreme? Yes. Will that be considered disinformation? Yes. And to say if the Pope is the Antichrist and the beast power, would that be considered hate speech? Yes. Then, brothers and sisters, what they're doing right now is prepared for us. Yes. What do you want to say about that, Elder? Yes, I, I, I totally agree. Um, that, that God's people need to be ready at all times. Ready at all times. And this and this right here. And this proposed AI program will be cemented by an off-platform human intelligence gathering. So it's not even going to be on the grid. It's going to be some off-the-grid intelligence gathering. So who is going to gather that intelligence? Hmm. You know what? That means they're going to be having people snitching on us. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a hand in the back. Okay. Listen to this. You want to say something? I, I was going to say, uh, I, I thought about the statement in Great Controversy that says the Roman church is far-reaching in the plans, plans and modes of operation. A lot of things that we're seeing right now has been put in effect before some of us were even born. Yeah. I remember when uh, in my neighborhood as a kid, I saw the sign on our corner with the man that looked like uh, Inspector Gadget. Yeah, Inspector Gadget. Where, where, where you, you, you kind of like police your neighbors. Wow, I didn't, I never saw, see, I never, ne I never noticed that. Yeah, that, that. I was just caught up into the gag go, gadget go kind of stuff, right? But go ahead. So, so that was a long time ago. So they were, they were conditioning people long time, you know, I'm talking 40, 
40 years or more right. for me to, um, to spy on your neighbor and police your neighbor. Yeah, neighborhood watch, exactly. Brothers and sisters, I just got a text that I'm going to read to you in a second. But look at this. This article has been widely criticized on conservative news sites. A report for the Daily Caller pointed out that social media companies are known to target conservative content online, including posts that are critical of gender ideology, climate change theories, COVID-19 policies, and vaccine safety. Some of this content is already labeled as misinformation and hate speech and is entirely blocked on some platforms. The way censorship is done these days is that each internet platform, such as Twitter, has its own moderation team and a decision-making engine. That's why you don't really want your stuff taken down because if you appeal, you're appealing to some engine, some machine. Twitter would only look at tweets by any specific Twitter user when deciding on whether to delete any tweets or suspend their office. And let me tell you this, I do believe in free speech, but you gotta still be careful online. So it's just don't put anything out there, understand this. Twitter modificators, moderators do not look at Getter and other external websites. So for example, user John Smith, one, two, three, four, five, may have a Twitter account and narrowly abide by Twitter rules, but at the same time have a Getter account where he would publish anti-vaccine messages. Twitter would not be able to suspend, I'm gonna show you this right here. Suspend John Smith's account, Twitter account, that is no longer acceptable to the WEF. The World Economic Forum, because they want to silence people with ideas, not individual messages or accounts. Did you hear that? So yeah, we, we don't want to just take you out for Twitter. We want to do something more than that. We want to take you off the internet. Brothers and sisters, for every seven day Adventist, our ministries, our self supporting ministries, and others, brothers and sisters, they are in danger of one day being labeled. What about the hate speech? What about the great controversy? Would that be looked upon as hate speech? Anything that's gonna go, we saw what happened over the last two and a half years. Anything that goes against the common narrative will be debunked, am I right? Um, there was a, last year, boy, it was a time, you said anything against the you know what? You put yourself in danger, am I right somebody? Listen to this right here. Notice this, another article says the same thing. By uniquely combining the power of innovative technology, off-platform intelligence collection, and the prowess of subject matter experts, who understands how threat actors operate, scale detection of online abuse can reach near perfect precision. Did you see this? Says the, in the WEF, in this way, trust and safety teams can stop threats arising online before they reach users. What does this have to do with the image of the beast? I'm going to tell you. It says here, finally one can start discerning the argument here once converted into human readable format as being able to simply pressure social networks to start moving towards preemptive censorship. Brother Bud, what do you think about that? You know, I think it's been like a year now we did a forum like this and the title of it was, Did Ellen White Get the Jab? Simple title, Get the Jab. And um, we, we had a picture of her with the needle. And, really? And um, we were very, very careful in how we asked and answered questions. But we were taken off of uh, YouTube for, for a long time. What? We, we just got restored Who? back. Night Hmm? Who did? Our church. Your church? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know y'all were taking off. Yeah. So you, you, you see how that is? And that's the reason why, you know, we, we got to be very careful. Do you understand this? Amen. Now, they're doing it on that kind of information. But what about when the Sunday laws come? And this is going to be the thing that's going to bring everything back to normal. Brothers and sisters, we are going to be taken off the Internet. This explains why the WEF needs to move beyond the major internet platforms in order to collect intelligence about people and ideas. What ideas? The three angels' messages. And everywhere else. Such an approach would allow them to know better 
what person or idea to censor, notice this, on all major platforms at once. Did you see this? Alex Jones, Infowars.com, um, got sued and lost, and he has to pay 50 million smackaroos. And I'm just going to read this. One of our members just sent this. You can take it off of the screen, Brother Richard. Um, one of, um, uh, Art and Tina says hi. All right. All right. Somebody says hi. Um, I'm reading from Jury Awards, the parents of Sandy Hook shooting victim. They, he got, he, he, he's got to pay back a lot of money. And the article says that Alex Jones has spread misinformation about national strategies the um, pandemic and election for years to a broad national audience. And understand this right here, what happened to Alex Jones is used as an example for anybody else that comes back. Now, do I agree with everything Alex Jones said? Some of the stuff that he has said, I'm like, I can't believe he's saying that. So that's the reason why on social media, understand this, when you're on a platform, it's not your platform, it's somebody else's. And they do have a right, do you understand? Whether you agree with it or not, to take you off if they look at you as a threat. Do you understand this? But what we're talking about is more than just a platform. They're talking about trying to get you taken off of the internet. And I just saw an article, I think, with Alex Jones where they were trying to get a judge to tell Alex Jones to give up Infowars.com. Now, how's it like somebody telling you to give up your own company? You have your own business, right? Yes. How, can somebody tell you to give up your own business? No. That's a voluntary thing, right? Yeah. But what's happening is, is that, understand, and see, what's happening is that the devil will create something like that to make it bad for us when the truth goes out. Do you understand this? That's the reason why Ellen White said that the work which we have failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, we're going to have to do it under a terrible crisis. And so, you know, the quickest way to do it is on social media. But even these things are about to get jammed up. Do you understand this? I want to read to you again. Now, this is from now, for those who don't know, um, Dr. Fauci uh, has been ordered by a federal judge, um, in the, in, including the Biden administration, to hand over their communications with five social media giants within 21 days. Because, but look, let me tell you this right here, man. We, we, we all know that you couldn't, you can't really, you could not, and you really got to be careful of saying anything different than the common narrative. Do you understand this right here? I've seen people that have had millions of views, and they put some really controversial stuff out, and they've never gotten taken down. But sites like myself and others got taken down. Just one of my videos last week was taken down on my, on my Isaac Olatunji page. It wasn't because of misinformation, it was because of something that somebody could have really let go. But Brothers and sisters, that tells you people are watching. I see your hand. People are watching. Do you understand this? So we got to be very careful. But look, this is what it says right here. You, go ahead. Go ahead. Can we read it? Yeah, I got it. It says, the ruling stems from a lawsuit filing earlier this year by Missouri Attorney General Judge Eric Smith and Louisiana Attorney General Jeffrey Landry alleging that the, this administration colluded with big tech firms, Twitter, Meta, which is Facebook's parent company, YT, you know YT is what we are right now, Instagram and LinkedIn to censor certain viewpoints under the guise of preventing the circulation of misinformation or disinformation. Now, granted, let me just say this to you. That is good in this place. Do you understand this? We don't want no terrorists putting stuff up on the Internet, am I right? But what's happening is it's going to go a little too far, am I right? So the truth that needs to get out will be taken down. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? Had a friend of mine on Facebook that was talking about Revelation 17. His video got taken down. Do you understand this right here? And he had to appeal to get it back up. Brother Bud, what do you want to say about this, brother? Well, for one, we, we can see that, that uh, the mark of the beast mm -hmm. is, is targeting freedom. That's right. And everything in the first, second, and third angels' messages goes against that. What, what I see is Babylon being rebuilt again, right. and it will be a conglomerate, a conglomerate that um, includes the whole world. Exactly. And the third angel's message, the three angel's messages, are still going to triumph. It's still going to triumph. E Amen. Even though we can see all of these things with them trying to take away our freedom of speech, 
I'm talking about speaking the, the gospel. Yes. I, I always thought of this thought. The work will be finished when no man can buy or sell. Mm. Because all of the, the, the social media platforms, we're going to be in front of them one day when we're before the courts. Mm. Although they take it from us while we can have access to, to, to money and, and so forth, when it's removed and we're brought to the courts, we're going to get free advertisement on all of them. That's right. So, so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the, how the triumph of the gospel, not by might, that's which right. means money, mm. nor by power. That's right. You look that up, it means wealth. Mm. But by my spirit, the work is going to still Amen. Finish. Amen. So either which way, the truth is going to get out. And we're going to have to use these platforms. Because I thank God for social media. We're able to connect with people a lot more easier and quicker. Let's go back to the screen here. I want to finish this part out. And then we're going to get to the image of the beast. Who had a question? Who had a question? Okay, let me read on. For example, in addition to looking at my Twitter profile, the World Economic Forum's proposed AI would also look at my Getter profile, and then it will make an intelligent decision to remove me from the internet at once. That is serious. What could happen to Project Ladder Rain? Gone. So, it, God forbid, if my social media account was taken down, I still got my page, am I right? but they can take you down from that as well too. It is somewhat of a simplification because they also want to look for ideas and not only individuals, but nevertheless, the search for wrong thing becomes globalized. Did you hear that? Of course, this AI content modification slots, listen to this right here, straight into the artificial intelligence, notice this social credit score. There it is right there. And if your social credit score dips below whichever techno communist AI thresholds and set by the elites, then all kinds of punishment will be meted out. But look at this. In Pakistan, political critics could have bank accounts frozen. Pakistani media outlets report that citizens are now being encouraged to turn over. Turn, notice this, they're being encouraged to turn in other what? Since, but turning other citizens, recording them, and sending them to the government on video. And you can do that. If a citizen's CNIC gets blocked by the government, they could then be blocked from daily activities like carrying out a bank transaction, selling vehicles, and inquiring cell phone SIM cards. You see that? Pakistan's interior ministry is warning that outspoken critics of the current government could find their biometric identity cards, what? Blocked. Leaving them without access to their bank accounts. Did you hear this, brothers and sisters? And what did they just do recently? They just had a Sunday lockdown to curb, well, notice this, to conserve what? Energy. So what happens is Sunday lockdowns, no car Sundays are being introduced right now to conserve energy. And so this so Sunday law is not out of the realm of possibility. Tyrannical control over people's freedoms and finances has been developing at unprecedented levels in several other countries, including communist China. And there are concerns about the European what? And what country? The United States falling in line with the idea of digital identity monitoring as well but technically we are in that age right now because everybody has a smartphone right listen to this right here it says critics warn that it is a what kind of horse trojan horse listen to this right here that with too much personal information in the hands of the government clearly we are witnessing right now the chinification of europe because what we see is happening in china right now with the social credit score where the government is monitoring all the people from the beginning to end, everything that they do, everywhere they what? Walk. They control everything and watch everything. Mercy. Brothers and sisters, listen to this right here. The EU insists that the digital identity program will be what? Voluntary. They always say voluntary, right? Skeptics are wondering how long before it becomes mandatory. For example, in the case of a future pandemic, global financial crisis, or terrorist threat, in Italy, the cities of Rome and Bologna have begun social credit programs that reward citizens for good behavior, hello, that officials think will fight what? Climate change. 
like using a bike instead of a scooter. Then it says a social credit system could easily be incorporated into a digital identity. This is serious. But they want control. And they're doing it right now with social credit scoring, where if you don't score a particular way, you're not, you're not allowed to travel. That's already in place. But imagine a government that if you step out of line, they can now turn off all your money and do it instantly. You cannot buy or what? Sale. You don't have the right in the marketplace or to participate anymore. That's what a digital currency allows a government to do. You hear that? And if you think it's going to happen in China, think again. The Federal Deserve, Reserve, where's the Federal Reserve at? Has already a study group, listen to this, looking at a digital currency for the United States. Notice this, and notice this. Here's the motive. And why are they afraid of doing that? Because they're afraid that if they don't do it, China will usurp the U.S. and become the world currency. That digital currency is taking over. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell you, this thing is coming. This thing is here. And what is the issue right now? Climate change. Uniting the world to tackle climate change. And what are they going to do to do it? A Sunday law. I'm going to write somebody. So understand this. Even if it's not this pope, understand that Pope Francis has taken this thing a lot more further and closer to the implementation of the mark of the beast. And now in November, Elder Bud, they're having COP26. But look what they did last year for COP26. Look at that. Look what happened on Sunday. They did a rest day. They rested on Sunday, brothers and sisters. And look what they say right here. Last week, we covered this last week, when the religious leaders of how many faiths? Does that include the, the papacy? Ascend on Mount Sinai in two months. And one of the ideas was returning to the Ten Commandments. Brothers and sisters, and look what it says in red, a global weekly carbon day of rest. Do you see that right there? It's here, brothers and sisters. Yes, yes, I know it says that they're going to give people different days to do it, but brother Bud, in the end, which day are they going to do it on? Sunday. Sunday. Brothers and sisters, we're about to see the image of the beast being formed. And we're going to see apostate Protestantism do their dirty work. You can take it off of the screen, brother Richard, because we're going to talk about something right quick. Brothers and sisters, it will be the apostate Protestant churches that will combine with spiritualism and Catholicism to bring this about. What do you want to say about this, brother? Yeah, I, I was thinking about Luke 2, 1. Yes. And um, this happened right before Christ came the first time. It says, and it, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree. There went out a decree. That's a law. Mm -hmm. from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now I know people look at this verse and think that there was some type of IRS system set up <laughs> back in these days, but what this word tax means is to enter into public records the names of men, their property and income. Amen. So they were put in a registry. As a matter of fact, you read in Desire of Ages where, where uh, the parents of Christ had to register Christ. Mm. And so this happened before Christ came the first time. Mm. We're looking for him to come the second time, and all, all that you've been reading is happening right before our eyes. Right before our very eyes. And so we know that things are going to be changing in the workplace. Am I right? And let me ask you a question. Will labor unions play a part in this? Well, brothers and sisters, let me show you an article. Let's go back to the screen. This just came out a couple of weeks ago. Machinist Union joins the delegation to Pope Francis on the behalf of working people. The Pope is involved. I told you Sister White was a true prophet. Oh, man. There it is right there. Brother Hodges, Brother Ingram, do you see this? The Pope is right in the middle with all these labor union leaders. Look at that. 
but we're conspiracy theorists. But yet, what Sister White said, the prophecies is coming to pass. It says here, I am, I am Air Transport General Vice President Richard Johnson recently joined other transportation unions at a meeting where? Hosted by the International Transport Workers Federation and the Vatican's Chancellor of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. And look what it says. This meeting brought transport unions and other trade unions across the world to join discussing forces to, in the fight for global justice. It's over, brother. Brother, we can kiss DC goodbye, right? We can kiss, and we can, you can kiss this world goodbye. It's over. Do you now believe Ellen White's a true prophet? Yes. Yeah, look at that right there. They're joining up with the Vatican. The Pope this month invited labor unions. Why is he inviting everybody They're just coming? And other organizations representing working people to the Vatican for a global, look at this, a global worker summit. Wow. You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk more about this at 8 o'clock. You got to come back on Zoom at 8 o'clock. What time did I say? The, there are talk about a global worker summit. And when you work, you got to rest, right? So what day are you going to rest on? Sunday. But you think that's something? Look at this right here. Protestants and Catholics meet Pope Francis. It's over. And guess when this was? May of this year. Let me show you this right here. The group is led by Archbishop Reese from Finally tonight, a group of Catholics and Protestants are meeting with officials at the Vatican. The group is led by Archbishop Reese from Poland and Protestant pastor David Hathaway from the United Kingdom. Yesterday, the group met Pope Francis. The delegation is preparing to hold a joint prayer event in Poland in July. Joining us now from Rome is David Hathaway, a Protestant pastor and president of the Eurovision Mission to Europe. Is he a real Protestant? He's an apostate Protestant, brothers and sisters. You're not supposed to be joining up with Rome, going to Rome to see the Pope and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you something in just a second. Watch this video. Pastor Hathaway, thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us more about meeting Pope Francis and what did you discuss and what was it like to meet him? <laughs> Well, it was very interesting to meet him, but it's quite critical because at the moment I'm working very much with the Catholic churches in Ireland, and it's the I'm the guest here of the Archbishop the, from uh, from Wads in Poland, Gregory Rees, and uh, he asked the Pope if he would like to speak to me, introduced me. And the Pope, first of all, encouraged me and thanked me for my work in evangelism because I'd be evangelizing in the former Soviet Union for... So why would the Pope be congratulating a Protestant for evangelizing? You know why? Because they're on the same team. Do you understand this? That's right, brother. They're on the same team. But listen to this. 61 years. And then I said that one of the big things which I've been able to do, which hasn't happened in any other country in the world, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2014, I was able to call all the Christian denominations together. And, and that's a miracle because I had Catholic, I had Orthodox, I had all the Evangelicals, the Pentecostal, the Charismatic, every single denomination. And I asked them one question. I said, look, we can work together in prayer if we forget all religious doctrines. What? There it is right there. I told you Ellen G. White was a true prophet. Do you now believe, brothers and sisters? Do I need to rewind that back? Yes, we got to rewind that to forget about doctrine. Oh, be, be, before I show you the video, what did Ellen G. White say? What did Ellen G. White say? Listen to what Sister White said. Listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy said. This is from a book called Great Controversy. Page 444. She says, the wide diversity of belief in the Protestant churches is regarded by many as decisive proof that no effort to secure a forced uniformity can ever be made. 
But there has been for years in the churches of the Protestant faith a strong and growing sentiment in favor of a union based on common points of doctrine. To secure such a union, the discussion of subjects upon which all would not agree to my doctrine, however important they might be from a Bible standpoint, must necessarily be waived. What must Gunun Diop and Ted Wilson do about this? They need to stop going to those meetings. Because, brothers and sisters, you cannot go into these meetings as a seven-day Adventist and keep your mouth shut. Well, they say we're just making friends. You know, we can be friends in heaven, but I'm, I'm going to be a real friend. We need to give you the truth. Amen. Am I right, somebody? And you keep, they keep going back to these meetings over and over again and taking pictures with them and, and all that kind of stuff, which is causing, and what, what I hate about it the most is, it's causing these people who hate the conference, these hate the, the Adventist church, these offshoots, well, they, they, they will, oh, they have a field day. Oh, I can get 10,000 more views this week. I can get some more tithe coming to my ministry because of what the evils of the church do. But listen what Ellen G. White says here. When the leading churches of the United States uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in what? Common. Common shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their what? Institutions. Then Protestant America will inform an image of the Roman hierarchy or the image of the beast and the infliction of what kind of penalties? Penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. Brothers and sisters, we are told that the image to the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism, which will be developed, and it's developing right now, when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. Is Sister White a true prophet? Amen. What are you going to say about this, brother, brother? You can take it off of the screen. No, no, don't take it off of the screen. Just keep it on here because I got to go back to this video. Hold on. Before we go back to before we let you say anything, let's let everybody hear this again. Every single denomination. And I asked them one question. I said, look, we can work together in prayer if we forget all religious doctrines and if you will accept only two things one the only authority in the church is the bible and secondly the only salvation is in the name of jesus and brothers and sisters okay can can the seven day adventist church join this you can take it off the screen richard you take it off the screen. Can the seven, can the Seventh Day Adventist denomination through its leaders join this? No. Okay, let me ask you. Listen, can Doctor O and Elder Bud join this? Because no. if we join it, they're gonna kick us out. First, they wouldn't let us join because we're gonna give them a book called National Sunday <laughs> Law. Amen. Oh, we're gonna give that. Oh yeah, you see that? We're gonna give them a book called The Great. The great controversy, not the great hope, but great controversy. Amen? Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you think about this video, brother? You, you know, the Catholic Church says if the Bible is the only guide for the Christian, then the Seventh-day Adventist is right in observing mm -hmm. the Sabbath. With exactly. The so he, he, he said using the Bible as our only guide. And, and um, I thought about another statement in here that says Protestants... Have, patron, have tempered with and patronized popery. popery. They are making con concessions which right. papists themselves are su surprised to, to see, see and fail to understand. Like the papacy is looking That's at right. this and they're knocking on the Catholic Church's door and they're, they're, they're baffled that it's a Protestant on the other side. Exactly. And uh, my mind goes back to I'm sure you've heard of the St. Bartholomew's Massacre. Mm -hmm. Well, that massacre happened after a Roman Catholic and a Huguenot got married. <gasps> and wow. right after that, you see the two, the Protestant and the Catholic, came together. Wow. And the worst massacre in, in, in history at the time that took place shortly after. So you're telling me because of a marriage exactly. between a Catholic and a Protestant? And we just saw that marriage happening right there. Mm-mm-mm. With, with the Protestants, apostate Protestants and Catholics. 
So we can expect persecution is right around the corner. Mm -mm -mm. But notice, but notice what Elder Bud said. Between a marriage, watch this right here. Between a Catholic and a Protestant. <sighs> I'm gonna have to go there. I'm gonna have to go there. Brothers and sisters, there was a book called Washington in the Lap of Rome. Let's go to the screen. Everybody needs to get this book called Washington in the Lap of Rome. This guy does not play, okay? And I want to read this to you, and I'm only going to read it because he brought it out. He talks about, listen to this right here. You have to be careful of, listen to this right here. Oh, come on now. Oh, okay. You got to be careful of what's called the female Jesuit. Yes. Listen to this right here. I'm going to read this to you. I think it's right here. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, listen to this right here. Um, yes, this is what it is right here. It is right here. The female Jesuit in America. Look at that. As in Europe is to be dreaded. No one can follow the trail of the Roman serpent without being convinced that Satan did not turn from women after he wrought the ruin of the father of the race through his seductive power over Eve. Through woman or through women, he finds a passageway to the heart of man. No greater peril confronts us than is found in the readiness which Protestant men marry Roman Catholic wives. I don't care if they're not a practicing Catholic. If you are a SDA, unless they take in Bible, I got, I got you, unless they take in Bible study, unless they are serious, they got a baptismal date with the Bible worker, with the pastor. And even if they say that, you've got to go to God and make sure. Are they doing this just to get me? Do not marry. Oh, my Holy Spirit. Do not marry anybody that's connected with Rome, brothers and sisters. Oh, my. General W.T. Sherman beclouded his life, gave up his hold upon the children God might give him, and so was robbed of his boy and did injustice to his own high aims when he took to his heart a woman who had first given herself to the priests of Rome. You got to make sure they come out completely out of Catholicism. Because guess what? They may come out of Catholicism physically, but Catholicism is still inside of them. It says, listen to this, because of this, he publicly declared that he could not accept the nomination for the presidency. Whatever he may do or not do, she has been the willing and untiring servant of Rome. By her wiles, another brilliant man lost the presidency and is today a broken wreck. There were very good reasons why God forbade the children of Israel from marrying wives from the heathen about them. You hear that? See, all these people on Facebook, they be getting married outside the church, and y'all be applauding them. Okay, I don't care if they're Catholic or not. If they're not a seven-day Adventist, are you with me? I know it's over. But even if they are Adventists and they marry a sad Adventist or a bad Adventist or even a mad Adventist, do you understand this? I know it's over. Went to a wedding back in 1998. Present true preacher married, found a beautiful, nice Christian woman. 20 years later, that man is now a Baptist minister, and she left the Adventist church with him. So you got to be careful who you marry. I don't care if they are present true. You ask God, Lord, I don't need no background check. Only I need a front ground check. Is this joker going to be a seven-day Adventist 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now? Because imagine that morning she, he got up and said, you know what? I'm not going to be an Adventist no more. And he started going to the Baptist church. And this brother is a ba ordained Baptist minister, and we went to Heartland together. We went to the Ellen G. White School, Heartland College, not Oakwood, Heartland College. And he is now a Baptist keeping Sunday. Brothers and sisters, so what this book is saying is real. Let's continue on. I see the hands. It says, <laughs> when this was done, the woman captured the man and carried with her the children. What? And carried with her the who? You marry a Catholic, guess what? Your children are going to be Catholic. Have mercy. 
Solomon, with all his wisdom, could not withstand her wiles, and Rome understands this power. And places, what? Schools filled with brilliant and captivating ladies near the military post as to capture the young men. See, they don't care. Let's just put some fine-figure women out there. They ain't gonna worry about that religion. All they worrying about is what that woman got, right, and what she can give. Major General Schofield, listen to this, right, was born into a Christian home, had an honored father who was a, this book was written in 1888, who was a Baptist minister, but a what kind of wife? Romans. Wife has taken him into the embrace of Rome. Wow. Let the warning be heeded. Judge Jesuitism by his infamous conduct towards the amiable Clement. Pius VI came next. We cannot describe the plottings and conflicts which disturbed the church prior to his election. Wow. His character is made apparent by the utterance, Pius V is the last pope canonized by the church. I wish to walk in his footsteps. Man, I don't, man, you need to just go get this book. It is called Washington in the Lap of Rome. There it is right there. Written in 1888. You can get this on the internet. It's a PDF copy, which means it's free. Amen. And if you got a computer, you need to get it and download it tonight. Or right now. Amen. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This was written in 1888. The serpent is intertwined as folds about the capital. Look at this right here. And listen to this. This is deep. I got to read this to you, Brother Bud. Listen to this right here. It says, oh, man, this is so deep. It says, Washington in the lap of Rome has been written to call the attention of the American people to the great trust that has been betrayed to the great work which devolves upon them. It uncovers facts which will bring the blush of shame to the cheek of the real Republican and fill his soul with indignation. 15, this is 1888, this is in D.C., 15,000 department clerks are under the surveillance of Rome. That was in 1888. How many they got today? If it, if it be not true as it is charged that a private wire runs from the White House in Washington to the Cardinal's Palace in Baltimore. And I believe Baltimore is a Catholic city. Brothers and sisters, they said in 1888, yeah, Baltimore, Maryland is a Catholic state. Maryland, Mary's land. Yes. I mean, you know, we don't think of it like that, but we, Virginia. but yeah. Virgin. Virginia, yeah. have mercy. Look at this right here. A private wire runs from Baltimore to the White House. That was, if they had a wire there, guess what? It's changed now. A wire runs from the White House to the Vatican because the president is Catholic. It's over, y'all. It's over. And can you see how the image of the beast can be formed now? You need to read this book, Washington in the Hands of Rome. Listen to this right here. This is very deep. This man, I don't know who this man was, but whoever this man was, I know Jesuit University in the New Light. Romanism is begin, beginning to uncover its hand in America. Did you see this right here? Slowly and steadily with the look for a saint of the outward seeming, with the heart of a Jesuit for the inward reality, Rome has accomplished in fact, if not in name, what in name as well as in fact, she achieved so many of the kingdoms of union of Europe, a union of church and state. And that is the image of the beast, brothers and sisters. See, Rome was about to strike his hand back in 1888, but God held it back. Am I right? Yeah. But when it comes back again, he's not going to hold it back. Do you understand this? You need to get this book, Washington in the Lap of Rome. Brothers and sisters, this book is deep. You need to get this. Oh, I know we've, we've covered so much, but guess what? Let me play this video. They all agreed, and for six years... He said they all agreed that we would dismiss doctrine. Brothers and sisters, do you see how this is going to play into the image of the beast. Do you see this? Do you now see it, brothers and sisters? I mean, do you see it? Well, brothers and sisters, before, Brother Bud, what do you want to say about this? You can take it off of the screen, Brother um, Richard. What do you want to say about this? I, I just thank God for 
Bible prophecy. Amen. Because Bible prophecy is history in advance. Right. And it doesn't give us all the details, but the details start coming out. Right. You, you see the details over time. And although it's prophecy, uh, 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 history in advance, it's also history repeated. So all we have to do is go back in history and we can see that these things has already happened before. Yes. And brace for them to happen again. Well, brothers and sisters, I need you to, to fasten your seatbelts. We're going to show you how the image of the beast in its embryonic form is here. Rolling Stone magazine came out with an article on September the 1st, 2022. And I just have a question to ask you. How many months ago was that? This happened nine days ago. I'm telling you, the stuff that we present here at State Line is always fresh manner. You hear me? <laughs> and why is it that our ministers are not preaching this? I'm being honest with you. I ain't talking about the self-support. Oh, oh, you, you save the serve and other independent ministries. Oh, they'll preach this all day long. But how many ministers in our conferences? And that's the reason why people go to these self-supporting ministries to get what we're supposed to be teaching. Am I right? And it doesn't mean that I'm better than nobody. I just want to just put that there. State line, pastor, oh, we're not better than nobody. Because sad to say, you got some independent ministers they preach one thing and do something else. It's interesting. I know one that they love to throw bricks at the church. But their stuff on this brother, I'm like, man, why are you still preaching? But you know what? What happens is if you're living in a glass house, don't throw no stones. There's a um, question right there. Somebody has a question right here. 30 seconds or less. Amen. Okay, somebody else has a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I have a question. Um, you are a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Yes. And the majority of these pastors that we have known for many years, why are they not doing what you're doing? Have you ever talked to them to share no, with them you, what no, you're doing? You no, know, let me just say this. What we're doing here is not popular. It's not popular. It doesn't get you speaking engagements at camp meetings. Do you understand this right here? <laughs> and it doesn't promote you to that big flagship church in that conference. Do you understand this? Or the conference office. So but, what but, happens is, hold on, let me just give you the real reason. What happens is we're not trained to do that. Mm -hmm. We're not trained to do it in theology school. We're not trained to do it once we get out in the field because it's not looked upon as popular. Because what happened was I had one colleague tell me straight up, he said, every preacher when I was growing up, they preached on end times. They were hustlers, whatever that meant. I mean, they just was something wrong with them. And he said, it may not be fair, but I see you in the same light. And it was not fair, you know. But what happens is, but what happens is what's being pushed today is, um, you know, these praising words it's about music and all these kind of wild stuff. And, you know, I mean, you, you got to keep a world of excitement up. Am I right? In order to keep the interest. Go ahead. I would think that the general conference president being the father of the don't say, don't say father, church. don't say father. Okay. I know you mean the leader. <laughs> Some people are like, yeah, that's right. But I, I, my thinking is that take it off, take it off of the um, screen, Richard. He's the head man in charge. So why isn't he sending these things okay. that you're doing to let, these pastors? Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Now, granted, let me say this. I, I'm not the only one doing it. I'm, it's I'm, just that. Okay, let me just say this, and I'm, let me take it off, because I don't want nobody thinking I think I'm better than nobody, because I'm not. No, no, no. I ain't nothing, you hear me? But watch this right here. All right, can you give her the mic? Can you give her, because somebody else has a question. Let me just let me answer your question, then we have to move on. Okay. What happens is this right here. Ted Wilson um, believes in the Adventist message. I know he does. His sermon he preached at GC proves it. But what happens is, remember, and this kind of is moving into another whole other thing. We're conservative on paper, but in practicality, especially among places like this division and other divisions, 
is pushing that more progressive liberal. Am I right, somebody? Is pushing that progressive liberal um, orientation that really shies away from it. And we just have a generation that has shied away from what you have been raised. And so what happens is he can be, we just one, the general conference president is just one person. Do you understand this right here? But what happens is what we need is a revival in our schools and our churches and our homes to preach it everywhere. But I remember I was so thankful when um, um, Dr. Pollard, when, on, when COVID hit, we was on a um, town hall meeting at Oakwood. And once this crisis hit with the COVID, he pulled out Not Testimonies, Volume 9. And he was reading about how, and I could tell just from what he was saying that he's catching on. He know that something's on with this. So there are people there that know it. Do you understand this, Rhea? But we need a lot more. Do you understand this? That is going to do it. And we want to let you know that I've talked with the secretary of the conference, and they want to do a conference-wide Religious Liberty Day here at Stateline next year. Amen. Where we can do a conference-wide, I'm hoping we can do it, a conference-wide Sunday Law Update. Wow. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. 30 seconds or less. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it was just this week when, uh, a couple of days ago, we got the news of Queen Elizabeth II, yes. who had passed. Yes. And um, when they showed her how, you know, her history um, and her influence and interaction with the United States, they yes. went back so many presidents um, of them coming to visit her mm -hmm. during her reign and um, just her, her influence. So I know we're accustomed to to talk talking about the um, the the priest, you know, uh, right. what do you call it? But the Pope, but not just him, but we forgot about Queen Elizabeth who's been reigning for over seventy something years in her position. Um, and all the people that were coming to her and her yeah. influence in the United States, even our Congress, because they showed her coming to our con to, you know, the United States and talking with um, I, I think was it yes, yes. Well, you know, all the kings of the earth are going to play a part in this. So, Brother Bud, anything you want to say before we proceed on? I, I just thought about Romanism in the old world. And Protestantism and in the new. And Protestantism in the, in the new. new. So you have to look at who's behind the scenes. I have a book called Footprint, Footprints of the Jesuits. And their footprints are everywhere. And es footprints especially are everywhere. Yeah. And understand this right here. Great Controversy. In the book Great Controversy, page 581, it talks about how while the Protestants are seeking to reestablish Sunday worship, Rome is waiting for her time to strike. And understand this right here. It could strike at any time. Do you understand this? Yeah. And we need to be ready. Let's go to the screen because I want to bring this to, I want to bring this on home. Let's go to the screen here. Now, just before we, before we go any further, we want to just give you a commercial break. In an hour and 45 minutes, I will be back on, on Zoom. So we need all of you to be back on Zoom because I possibly cannot finish this until you get on Zoom tonight at 8 o'clock. This is the times. We'll have it at the end. But what happens is um, Rolling Stone magazine had an article called Meet the Apostle of Right-Wing Christian Nationalism. It says the new Republican fringe is done with the separation of church and state. You see that? William Dutch Sheets has been trying to tear down that wall for decades. It says, Sheets, 68, is one of America's most influential Christian voices demanding an end to the separation of church and state. These image of the beast formers are here right now. He has been at the forefront of that movement for how many years? 20 years. But now the Republican part has come to him with a growing contingent that's embracing his end time vision of America as a Christian theocracy. If you do your research, a theocracy is where the church controls the state. So what he's saying is we want to break, uh, make America a theocracy, Elder Bud, where God and the Bible and the Ten Commandments is the standard rule of the land. And that kind of thinking is going to lead to the image of the beast. It says here, at this July 1st worship event, she's told the crowd, we must marry these two arenas, the civil and the what? 
sacred. They are not separate in scripture, he added. Then insisted God never intended for it to be separate. Talking about church and state. But look at this right here. It says the right's new hunger for theocracy. Listen to this right here. Is creating an opening for figures like sheets who has long preached that Christians can not only impose their morals on society through the levers of government, but that doing so is Jesus' most ardent desire, that the church can impose their morals on society. Brothers and sisters, thank God for Rolling Stone magazine for doing what we've been saying for the last 150 years. Sheets is a leading figure in a fundamentalist movement known as the New Apostolic what? Reformation whose followers believe that America is anointed by God to convert the world to Christianity. Didn't the Bible say that the United States would lead out in leading to the worship of the beast? It says, by force, if necessary. Didn't the Bible say that there would be a death decree that if you do not worship the image of the beast that you will be killed? And they seek to accelerate the return of Jesus, not just the return of Christ, but his rule over the earth. When Jesus comes back to bring the millennium, most Protestants believe that when Jesus comes, he's going to come on the earth and he's going to reign for 1,000 years. Brothers and sisters, Satan is going to take advantage of that by personating Jesus. Amen? And he's going to come to this earth and say, the only way we're going to bring this millennium is if we worship on Sunday. How do I know? Because guess what? God has already told us. Thank God. Somebody said, where did the spirit of prophecy say it? I'm going to read it to you right now. Can I read it to you right now? Yes, oh, we're almost done. But I want to hit this point. And then we're going to have to cover the rest tonight at 8 o'clock. Because brothers and sisters, we are going to see what will cause the whole world to join up with the papacy. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Selected Messages, book three, page 428. They declared that they had the truth and that miracles were among them and that angels from heaven, demons in human form, talked with them and walked with them and great power and signs and wonders were performed. Listen to this right here, among them. And that this was the temporal millennium that they had been expecting for so long. And then it says, the whole world was converted and in harmony with the Sunday law. Do you see this right here? And this little feeble people, seven day of Venice, stood out in defiance of the laws of the land and the law of God and claimed to be the only right ones in the earth. Do you see this? This is what this movement is seeking to do. Do you understand this? And it says, this divine mission, as they see it, will be carried out when the true believers seize control of the institutions of the United States government. This is Rolling Stone magazine. Christian nationalism is on the rise among the religious right. Many among the fundamentalists seek to live in a country where their biblical views are not just protected, but imposed on others as a matter of law. This proposition that America should be remade as a theocracy is most popular According to a 2021 poll among white evangelicals, that is to say the Republican base. More than a third of this group believes that the federal government should stop enforcing the separation of church and state. Rolling Stone magazine, they've interviewed Michael Jackson, they've interviewed Prince, they've interviewed just about every famous rock and pop star why in the world are they talking about christian nationalism why are they talking about the image of the beast you know why because god says god sees that if my people are not going to put it publicly i'll have the world say it do you understand this right here that is this more than a third of this group believes the federal government should stop enforcing the separation of church and state and declare the united states as a what kind of nation the national Apostolic reform movement in particular dovetails from the far right of the Republican Party because it blames the nation's problems on the same enemies, abortion providers, homosexuals, religious minorities, etc., with the distinction that the NAR followers believe that these disfavored groups are literally satanic. They use this language of what kind of warfare? 
Spiritual Warfare, says Steve Snow, a professor of politics who published an academic paper on the NAR where he says it inevitably has moved over into the political realm so that your political opponents are demon. Yes, thank you, demon possessed. This reformation emerged from the, no, this is, I want you to read this right here. They emerged from the what kind of tradition? Charismatic tradition. Do you see this right here? Of Christianity in which believers seek direct encounters with the who? Holy Spirit. In Pentecostalism, for example, this comes in the form of speaking in what? Tongues and other gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says this second beast is going to bring down fire from heaven and deceive men by the form of those miracles. And which body of Christians in this country believe that? Pentecostal churches. But the NAR goes much further. Its followers believe that since the turn of the millennium, the world has entered into a what kind of age? New age of Christian apostles and prophets and men and women who did receive direct revelations from God and his vision for his will on the earth. Ellen White says in Great Controversy, 624, that men and women will arise professing to have revelations that direct the testimony of the Holy Scriptures. And one of those things is going to be is we need to keep Sunday, brothers and sisters. Listen to this right here. Let me, oh, yeah, listen to this. The NAR adherents anticipate reigning alongside Christ as wealthy and favored kings and priests during his long heavenly rule on the earth. Brothers, they are ready to, they are ready to take over the government. This is why I'm saying the image of the beast is now forming in America. It says Sheets preaches against the historical record that America was founded as a Christian nation and that he used what country? As God's essential weapon for advancing Christianity across the globe. In his vision, he says, Christians will take over Washington, D.C. We believe you're going to raise up constitutional judges, he says. We believe you're going to put somebody in the White House that will say, oh, yes, we are Christian nation." And he has never soft peddled his theocratic beliefs. He told a crowd in 2012 that it wasn't realistic for Christians to take over everything and rule the earth completely for the Lord. But we're supposed to try. Our assignment until Jesus comes is to bring his kingdom rule into the earth. And if he rules by law, what day will be that day? Sunday. So that our region looks like heaven again. He counseled his followers to divide and conquer and to raise up kingdom warriors who are willing to do whatever it takes to bring your kingdom rule in the earth. And the last slide, listen to this right here, um, for this article. She shared a message about Christian nationalism he said was directly from God. Listen to this right here. The Lord has confirmed to me that the door to the government arena and to Washington, D.C., specifically is again wide open he wrote insisting that this invitation has not only been extended to me but to the entire body of christ in videos posted earlier this year sheets decried the notion that christians should pray for god's will to be done but not invoke themselves directly in politics as one of the greatest deceptions that Satan has ever visited upon the church. What he's saying is you just can't pray for the kingdom to come and not do anything about it. He calls the government God created and insists that Christians must accept our God-given call, extending his influence over it. The alternative, he says, is allowing evil to reign over us. Now, I want to just read this to you. They view Christianity as a missionary faith with a manifest destiny to do what, somebody? Conquer the what? And if that won't, that won't work, that work won't be fully completed until the second coming of Christ. NAR followers believe that it is their duty to prepare the planet in the meantime, making it as biblical as possible. Jesus delegated, establishing his kingdom to us, you and me. Brothers and sisters, this is apostate Protestantism. We're told that all in regard to this matter is not yet understood, and it will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. State line. International, state line, live. Do you see 
that we're at the end. Do you see why we have to do this every single week? And brothers and sisters, I am committed as your pastor. As long as I'm your pastor, we're going to continue to preach this end time straight testimony. Because the world needs it. And as we said before, brothers and sisters, you see what's going on. I see you. I see you. The world is uniting against climate change. Didn't Ellen White say they would do that? Yes, my brother. Go ahead. Do you see that? Uh, Dr. O, yes. when, when the Republicans lost the election the other day, mm -hmm. they made a vow. I was listening to their stations during the day sometime when I'm working, I drift into the, their stations. And they said they have planned to put uh, Christian folk from the evangelical uh, background, governors in, in uh, both houses of Congress, and all the judicial areas, mayors, everything, so that they can have the position to make the decisions. And at the end, it would be uh, putting together the image of the beast. Wow. Brothers and sisters, Sunday laws are coming. They're becoming universal once again. We know both from prophecy and history that these laws are a threat to our religious liberties. Do you understand this right here? What you're seeing is what the spirit of prophecy says. She says the light that we have upon the third angel's message is the what light? True light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. All in regard to this matter is not yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. Brothers and sisters, this is the reason why billboards like this need to be put out all over the globe. If people can put billboards about beer, billboards about abominations that we know are wrong, what is so wrong in putting a billboard up? Well, somebody says somebody's going to be offended. Well, guess what? I'm offended every time they put beer up. Are you with me? I'm offended every time they put sex up. Am I right, somebody? But it's like you have seven-day Adventists that are scared of their own message. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about it all tonight. We're going to leave this up here for the next couple of minutes. Brother Bud, what do you want to say about this? I just see everything that you've been bringing to our attention happening, and uh, it's especially in the political world. That's right. Uh, we, we see in America a whole party, the Republican Party, is, is bracing for for this Christian nationalism. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I thought about when, when Trump ran the first time and he told all, all of the evangelicals he was going to give them their voice back. Well, he didn't get the opportunity to do that. He, he, I, I have an article that says, I'm going to make Sunday school great again. Mm. <coughs> and the, the evangelicals have been sitting on the sidelines. That's right. They're waiting to get back in the game and I believe we're just a trigger away, trigger away. From, from them getting back to, the, to uh, the point they were at in 2016. That's right. And um, I don't know what's going to happen to Trump, but if he runs again, if he's not behind bars, I believe he's going to win. And he's going we'll to, he's going to, I believe he's going to uh, give the evangelicals exactly what he promised them the first time he ran. And then we're going to see this really uh, come together. And you know, it's another candidate that I think that um, could possibly win is DeSantis from Florida. Um, you got to look at him, brothers and sisters, because what happens is he was the one of the few governors that stood up to the, to the, to the, um, to the, to the um, powers that be um, for those who are watching online, I need you to come on us. We're going to start in an hour and a half. I need you on Zoom in an hour and a half. We're just putting it up there so people can remember. Um, I believe that if anybody will give Trump a run for their money, it's going to be DeSantis. And he's Roman Catholic. And he's Roman Catholic? Yes. What? Hold yeah. up, hold 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 up. Oh, what's his first name? Ron. Ron DeSantis. Please don't tell me he's a Roman Catholic. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Please don't tell me that. No, come on, no, come on now. Is he Catholic? How you know that? How you know that? Oh, man. It's over. It's
Brother Richard, take it off for a second. <laughs> take it off. Woo! Take it off. Oh, man. I got to show this to everybody. Now, let's be honest now. I mean, I got to give it to DeSantis. He stood up against the system. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. He did. And hold on now. I don't know. Hold on, because I can't believe it. I know. No, you're telling a lie. Are you sure he's not Roman Catholic? Oh, no. No, please. And this brother right here, I'm telling you, this brother could be. The, he could be the next. Where, where does it say that at? Huh? Don't even count out Mike Pence because he's the underdog. Mike Pence not going to get it. I doubt. I really doubt that. I doubt. I die. Yeah, he's Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. Wow. Man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Sunday Law Update. Those of you on YouTube, do not get off right now. We got hot breaking news. Oh, no. Listen to this, right? Oh, man. Let's go to the screen. Let's go to the screen. August 18th. Look at this right here. Look at this. August 18th, 2022. How long ago was that? Media fails to acknowledge that 2024 hopeful Ron DeSantis is as Catholic as Biden. It's over. It's over. It's over, brothers and sisters. It's oh Lord. I don't think I personally don't think Trump's gonna win, but personally, I mean if he may win, I don't know. Look what it says. We're I, oh, we're gonna talk about this tonight at eight o'clock. We're not used to thinking of Ron DeSantis, Florida's rapidly culture warring governor and a possible 2024 candidate for the Republican presidential candidate as a Catholic politician. He is clearly one, although the documenting the ins and outs. Wow. As a child, DeSantis, a descendant of Italian immigrants, attended Our Lady of Lords Catholic School in Florida. As an adult, he remains Catholic enough not only to have his son baptized with water from the Sea of Galilee, but to emphasize, emphasize, like that makes a big difference, emphasize the power of prayer in public sentence. Look at this right here. He is just as Catholic as Biden. Oh, Lord. Why a glove by the Protestants. Oh. He's a definitely conservative. Brothers and sisters, it's over. You can take it off, Richard. It's over, y'all. It's over. <laughs> Brother Bud, why did, you, why did you drop that bomb on me? You know why? Because the Lord told him to say it. You see why we got... Do we need, do we need to talk about this at 8 o'clock? Yes. Do you know, do you know tonight's... We're going to call it... To, the possibility of having another Catholic president if Biden is not reelected in 2024, it's gonna bust the internet. Brothers and sisters, let's go back to the screen one more time. And we wanna ask um, Brother, brother um, Jones, can you get your family to come up and sing for us? Tonight, in an hour and a half, we're gonna talk about this. Brother Bud, why did you drop this bomb on me? <laughs> There's a song back in the day called <laughs> Dropping a Bomb on Me. What you want to say, Brother Bud? I, I was trying to find another, another good book that I have. It's called oh. 50 Years in the Church of Rome by uh, Charles Tenniqui. Yes, and, 50. Uh, he, he talks about, mm. th there, there's a statement where he says, then we will rule the United States of America. Wow. We will not only elect the president. I'll just stop right there. We elect the president. Yes. And listen so, to this. <clears throat> I, I can't find the page. That's just out of Charles Chenequi. Listen to this. DeSantis identifies himself as a Christian. He is a member of the Roman Catholic Church. It's over. It's over. It's over. It doesn't matter which side, whether it's liberal or whether it's conservative, yeah. as long as it's a Catholic. Let me tell you this right here. Let me say this to you right here. So look here. 
for those of you on YouTube, I, this vid, my, um, the, the, it's been up long enough. So we're about to take this down, okay? Take it off of the screen, brother um, Richard. Brothers and sisters, you done heard it. We're going to talk about this tonight. And, I, you know, I, 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 and I'll be honest with you. I, I've been trying to tell people. Nobody wants to believe. I know God is still in control, but listen to this right here. I don't care how liberal a seven-day Adventist may be. As Adventist, I don't care who you are. We still family. I'm going to raise somebody. Brothers and sisters, whether it's a liberal Catholic or conservative Catholic. Bro, come on, Jones family, come on up. Come on up. I don't think they're here. They still, they're right there. They are? Oh. They still family. Brother Bud, why did you drop that bomb on us, brother? You know why? Because the Lord wants us to hear. What you want to say about this, brother? It's over. All right. It's over. Mark, Mark, Go ahead. Mark's final comments is that um, I, I remember the, I believe it's on page 30, Great Controversy, the man running up and down uh, Jerusalem. Yeah. And he was warning everyone else of what was coming. And I know we've heard these things countless times, but will we be like that? That uh, that gentleman that was warning everyone else, but got caught up yes, in right. the destruction. So, I, I pray for me and my house. That's all I can speak for. That um, we're we're our end is not like his. That's right, brothers and sisters. We want to thank Elder Bud. Let's give him a hearty amen. 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 If you want to get in contact with um, Elder Bud, how do how do people get in contact with you? And if you're looking, if you are in the state of Georgia, or you're looking to relocate to a find a country home in Georgia, he is an Adventist realtor in the state of Georgia. If you're looking for, so how, how can people get in contact with you? It's going to be buzzing tonight, brother. Go ahead, give the number. 770-905-3786. One more time. 770-3, uh, 770-905-3786. One more time. Seven seven. Some people might like zero nine zero five three seven eight six. Amen. And if you want to hear things like you heard today, and you're in the Atlanta area, please visit our church. And what's the name of your church? Kennesaw Remnant Seven Day Adventist Church. Pre in preaching the straight testimony. So Amen. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing, nothing but, but the truth. Nothing but. Amen. Truth. So you're looking for a church in Atlanta? This is the church to go to. Thank you very much. Amen. So right now, I'm going to get out of the way and let the Jones family sing for us, and then we'll have some final comments, and then we're going to close. Yes. Can we move this table, please? Amen. You can just move it. Amen. Thank you. And we can move these chairs out of the way. Okay. All right. All right. Hello. Test it, test it. Amen. Hello. Thank you for the cough drop. Amen. <laughs> Happy Sabbath once again, church. We are the Jones family, and uh, we stand before you once again. We are going to sing the song, The Savior is Waiting. Um, uh, we, we recognize that um, God speaks in mysterious ways, and we had had the request when we, were, uh, when we were exiting the platform, but then another gentleman came to us and said, you know, did someone ask, uh, do you guys have a song that you want to sing? And we said, well, someone actually already asked us. And lo and behold, it was the exact same song. So we recognize the two people. So that's the song we're going to sing for you today. We pray that you are blessed and hear the words of the song. All right.
before and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door oh how he wants to come in that usually the crowd thins out, but it wasn't, didn't thin out that much tonight. Brothers and sisters, man, I tell you, you enjoy, you enjoy this? Amen. Can we do it next week? Amen. Even if you said no, we're going to do it anyway. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, um, we're going to be meeting in a little over one hour from now on Zoom. The, um, the, the, the ID is on there. We're going to come back and we're going to finish this up. <sighs> this is the part I hate the most on Sabbath, when we got to go. But brothers and sisters, we thank God for each and every single one of you. We just ask you, my appeal is, let's just live the life. Amen? Amen. I mean, I'm saying, it's, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. Am I right? Let's be a living witness. Let's pray and ask God to lead us to somebody to witness to, to give this present truth to. Amen? And then, brothers and sisters, we're going to come back next week, and we're going to give you some what, somebody? Straight testimony. Amen. Here at State Line SDA. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer, thanking you, Lord, for a wonderful Sabbath. Can you turn that off, please? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Father in heaven, we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us. Be with your children all around the globe, Lord God, as we continue on this talk tonight at eight o'clock so bring us back out for your holy spirit give us the latter rain that we may finish the work may you remove all differences in our minds and our hearts towards anybody lord god and may we go forth as a united front thank you lord for answering this prayer in jesus name amen amen everybody come on back at eight o'clock and get the what somebody straight testimony amen amen
Nothing's happening in the house. We just bought a camper.